and welcome to Bigara, which is the start of the paddle down the Murray River. As you can see, I'm here in my little white water boat. It's a lot shorter than what I've been paddling for the last few years, like half the size even. Uh, but because of the shallowness and the speed and the narrowness, narrowness of the river, I'm going to paddle this one today and then switch to the sea kayak for the rest of the paddle. Uh, but it's, yeah, nice cold, sort of six degrees, but very enjoyable. So I've just realized it's been probably about 15 years since I've paddled my white water boat and uh, yeah, take a few things for granted when you got a sea kayak, like having a rudder. That also certainly makes things a lot easier because I've been doing a lot of spinning around in circles. And uh, the space in it, God, I just had to take my booties off because my feet were so cramped, they were in pain. But uh, now it's all very cruisy, getting back in the swing of it and remembering my old white water days. So I uh, just got my first get out and walk spot just here. As you can see, you don't want to get stuck under one of those. Every time I lift my arms, water runs down my back. Um, you might have noticed that the river is a little wider now. That's because the uh, outflow from the dam at Ken Coburn has just joined up with the Murray and the river has literally tripled in size and is flowing very fast again, which is lovely. I now understand why people start in their sea kayaks at Bringenbrong Bridge because they get to take advantage of all of this water. I don't know what it is about this kayak, it just loves spinning around backwards. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I've only got a couple more kilometres to go, and then I'm going to go and visit my favourite Ken Coburn service station and have an egg and bacon roll and a cup of coffee, I think. Uh, tired of spinning around in circles. Good morning and welcome to day seven of this journey. So today I've just got started the kayaking or the proper kayaking leg of the paddle. So I'm in my uh, fully loaded Mirage Sea Kayak at the moment. And yeah, I left Bringenbrong Bridge uh, just about, uh, I think it ended up being about nine o'clock. And yeah, I've been enjoying this beautiful paddling day down the Murray River. see them but up there is my family all standing up on those houses watching me disappear into the distance. Just sitting here having a bit of lunch on the side of the river here which is a uh, not a bad little spot. Done about 25 kilometers so far and it's been a lovely morning very cruisy paddling at about, I don't know, 11, 12 k's an hour and if I drift I'm normally doing about 7 k's an hour so at this rate I could drift all the way down to the campsite which would be quite nice so I think I've got another 20, 20, 25 k's to go so yeah, very much enjoying this this is definitely what the trip's all about
just up there is the Tintaldra Hotel, which is uh, one of the oldest hotels on the Murray River. And uh, we had dinner there last night and it was very good food and they had very nice beer. And as tempting as it is to uh, wander up there and have one, uh, I'm actually staying next to the Gingilic pub tomorrow night. So I figure for the first night I actually should go and camp somewhere a little bit more remote than the local hotel. So I thought I should explain to you how the whole uh, Murray River and the border works because basically this is the border between New South Wales, which is on the right, and Victoria on the left. And that's the way all the way down to South Australia. Uh, actually, the river itself is in New South Wales, so it's that bank is the border uh, between the two states. And what's really nice is the uh, Victorian side, the first 200 metres, uh, is actually uh, crown land so you can legally camp pretty much anywhere along the river there. Uh, the only issue is that some properties don't have fences so you end up having cows in your campsite and also some farmers probably feel like that's their land and they don't really want you there so you got to pick your spot correctly. But just here we've got the uh, what's called the Clark Lagoon Wildlife Reserve, so you can see it just here on my map, and that's where we're going to be camping tonight, which is public land. Well, that was a pretty excellent day to start off the big paddle. Uh, did 50 kilometres over five and a half hours, and averaging about 10 k's an hour, which was pretty good. So the new, the beard's getting a bit scratchy today, but uh, no, very much enjoying it. Very happy to have a nice campsite. Had a bit of sun this morning and then a bit cooler this afternoon but as you can see over there the clouds are starting to clear so it's looking a bit nice for tomorrow as well anyway I'm just making a uh, improvised beef nachos uh, tonight so a bit of beef a bit of corn chips which I've been cradling between my legs <laughs> the whole paddle so they didn't get crushed uh, salsa cheese the whole lot so a bit of gourmet Mexican night tonight. So tomorrow I've got 40 k's down to the Gingilic pub so I'll be able to camp outside the pub and probably get a pub meal so I won't have to cook tomorrow night which will be quite nice and then keep on making my way down to the Hume Weir and down to Albury where I'm having a day off at the end of the week. Anyway I am going to go back to my nachos and have a good night. <laughs> Well, good morning. It is, uh, I think it's day nine actually. I, yesterday I said day seven, but it was day eight. I can tell by the length of my beard. Uh, so I had a lovely night at Clark Lagoon Wildlife Reserve last night, uh, only a couple of caravans there. I was just having a chat with some of them this morning, they were very friendly. And it's a nice balmy sort of 7 or 8 degrees because it's a little bit cloudier today. So that makes it a bit more pleasant than the minus 1 degrees yesterday morning. And uh, yeah, just heading down to Gingilic Pub for the night. So it should take me about 4 or 5 hours to get down there. So a very cruisy day again today but just letting all the, the muscles warm up before I start paddling across Hume Weir where there will be no current. So as you can see the uh, sun has come out and it's turned into a gorgeous morning. And of course it's about time I started getting a bit more philosophical uh, because I've had a couple of days in my own head and uh, I've been thinking about this whole idea of doing the whole Murray uh, journey so the whole paddling the whole thing and it's kind of cool because everybody can kind of create their own journey so there are about I think including myself about five groups that are doing the river at the moment and everyone's doing it in a slightly different way so there's some people who are going a lot faster and camping very remote there's other people who are taking their time and going to do it over three or four months and I guess I'm doing a little bit of a combination of both 
I'm certainly not rushing my way down the river. But there's no right way or wrong way to do the river. It's really everyone just defines their own journey and works out what their adventure is going to be. So, for example, some people are, uh, I guess, are kind of avoiding camping in public areas where there are other caravans or and trying to be a bit more remote or not stopping off in the towns. And that's cool. Uh, my sort of philosophy for my paddle is I want to kind of experience the whole river and that's including going into some of the towns and you know spending some money in the local shops and just kind of getting to know everything about river life on the Murray River so yeah I think it's kind of cool how you can define your own journey there's no real way to do it I'm sure there are purists out there but that's their prerogative to be a, a purist about how it should be done but this is how I'm doing it so if you're ever doing something like this just define your own rules and do it your own way anyway that's enough being uh, too deep and meaningful so I am gonna keep paddling I think I've done oh, I've only done 11 K's but just taking my time today because it's such lovely weather well here we are at the Jinjilic pub and a very nice looking campsite as well Excuse me. Don't try and steal my barbecue shapes. Don't look so innocent. I always seem to be eating when I'm talking to the camera, which is fairly rude, I apologise for that. So we're up to uh, day 10 now, so it's Tuesday. Uh, a fairly foggy, cold morning. It's about one degree at the moment. I'm just down here camped on the lawn at uh, Jinjilic Pub. So it's a nice little public piece of land that has a pub right next door, so how could I resist? So I had a nice evening last night in the pub, a couple of beers and a nice counter meal and a very in-depth conversation about wombats with the bar staff, which was quite pleasant. And also in the afternoon when I was uh, doing a bit of blogging, I got a surprise visit from some ballooning friends that live in Albury who had been watching my progress on Facebook and predicted I'd be staying at the pub tonight. So they drove an hour to come and visit me and uh, have a drink and gave me a bag of Mars bars, which was very kind of them. And yeah, it's uh, today's a pretty big day because I you know, over the next two days I've got to do about 100 kilometres uh, across the Hume Dam. So I've got probably most of today I'll still have a bit of flow, but then it's going to pretty much stop as I hit the Hume Dam. So I'm going to try and knock off as many of those kilometres today as I can uh, to make tomorrow a bit more pleasant on the flat water. But looking at the weather, it's going to be a crack a few days. Uh, in fact, in a few days it's going to hit about 20 degrees. So I shouldn't have too much problem with wind crossing the Hume Dam, which I know can be a pain and some of the other paddlers have had headwinds crossing it. But according to the weather, and I'm sure I'm jinxing it, it's going to be quite still. So hopefully get some nice footage while I'm crossing the dam. As you can see the uh, river's got a lot wider today and it's less windy so lots of long straights of just paddling down the middle of the river it's still tracking okay doing about 10 k's an hour but got to paddle a lot more than I have in the last couple of days um, it's just going to start slowing up more and more as I get closer to the dam I'm assuming but that's all right we'll get there still very foggy as you can see so hopefully this will lift and give me a bit of sunshine which will make things a lot more pleasant <sighs> sunshine still very foggy but it's trying to break through I'm just absorbing whatever I can get 
actually it's about oh, quarter past 11 so I'm gonna probably stop and have an early lunch soon getting a bit hungry and if this sun pops out I'd like to absorb some of the heat I thought I might give you a bit of a cartography lesson based on my year and a half of a cartography degree that I never finished. But one thing I did learn was when a cartographer draws a topographic map and they're drawing a lake or a reservoir, they always draw it at full capacity. Because right now I am just here and according to this map it looks like there's a lake there that is about, I don't know, two to three kilometres wide. And if you look at it now, that there would be the lake. So we're pretty much still just in the river here. And that's because Lake Hume at the moment, or the Hume Dam, is only at 43% capacity. And I reckon it's quite a few years since this has had any water in this part of the lake. Actually, I might send up the drone and have a look at what it looks like from the air. Doesn't look like much of a lake there, does it? That is pretty much meant to be lake all the way over to that tree line just near the hills. And fortunately, that means for me that this river should still be flowing for quite a while until we do get down to that lake. on the island. Definitely means there won't be any cows. I'm just going to check it is actually an island. Yep, this is my island. Well, isn't that an idyllic spot? Now I've ruined it with my face. Uh, so yeah, huge day. 63.5 kilometers today. So started just after eight and it's now about quarter to five so a long long day of paddling and as you can see there the water is not flowing anymore because we're in the lake so tomorrow we've got well I've got about probably about 35 kilometers of flat water but I'm gonna leave very early and it looks like the weather's gonna be like today so probably a bit foggy in the morning but uh, it's going to be nice and glassy hopefully, but we'll see. I've learned to expect the unexpected on this trip. That was pretty brutal for the last hour. I've got a very sore lat. I'm going to take some anti-inflammatories now, but yeah, every paddock had a uh, cow in it. So I was quite lucky to find this little island here, which is going to make a nice little campsite. Unfortunately, the road is just here. Um, but I don't think it's going to be very busy, plus I'm going to leave pretty early, so it doesn't matter if I wake up early. So now it is dinner time, and call the family, and probably start thinking about writing a blog and then going to sleep. So I will catch you in the morning, and we'll see what tomorrow entails, heading down to the Hume Weir. Well, good morning. I'm here in the Hume Dam and just about head off. It's just on sunrise. As you can see behind me, it's starting to get a little pink behind me. However, today I have my favorite, my least favorite conditions, which is windy fog. So I'm heading down there, down towards Hume Weir. Uh, I think it's just because I'm in this tight little valley here where I camped last night. And uh, yeah, it's got a bit of wind rocketing down the valley just to make it a little bit more pleasant. 
Uh, anyway, I'm all packed up, ready to go, so I'm going to hit the water because there I can rug up and just start heading on down. I think of this wind is a bit of a tailwind for now, so hopefully that will continue and then it will die off when I get to the actual main part of the lake. I uh, thought I'd better show you where we're going today. We being all of us together. So we're up here and we're going to be following the Yume Dam which as you saw yesterday isn't quite a dam yet but it's starting to get that way and then making my way all the way around down to Lake Hume Tourist Park down here at the Hume Weir. So you can see where the river goes based on all those old dead trees that used to be along the banks of it. They all look pretty creepy now that the uh, the river's been flooded into the dam and this fog is making them look just that little bit more creepy. You can see the, old, the stripes on them too from the different water levels. And almost guilty at the moment because uh, I've got an incredibly nice tailwind and I'm almost surfing my way <laughs> along the, the dam so you can see I'm drifting at quite a good speed here uh, I know that some of the other people in front of me that have done this have had horrible headwinds so yes yeah, so I don't want to curse it but I think I've got a much easier day today and the sun looks like it's going to start coming out soon too to cross the Hume Dam. Sorry, just checking to see what have we done. So we're just on 39.1 kilometers and been on the water for seven hours and 15 minutes. So yeah, Hume Dam is just down here. You can't really see it with the GoPro, but you'll be seeing it tomorrow because I've got to walk around it. And I'm staying just here at the, uh, at the caravan park. So hopefully I don't have to walk too far, but it looks like I'm gonna have to get the wheels out and walk up a bit of the hill. So a very nice day, very calm, very glassy water. I mean, this morning I had a beautiful tailwind, so kind of spoilt today, which is lovely. And got a nice sunny afternoon, <sighs> but I'm naked. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go and set up camp and walk up that hill, get the trolley out. Well, welcome to another episode of Andrew Pushes, a form of transport that's not meant to be pushed. As you can see, I'm uh, walking around the Hume Weir. So it's about a 1.6k walk and I'm nearly there. The river is just down here. So I just got to go down this dirt track and I will be there. Uh, so yeah, it's only about a 30k paddle into Albury today. And then I've got a uh, hotel room waiting for me for a couple of days so I can get some video edited. So looking forward to that. And yeah, nothing much else to report other than it's a cracker of a morning. Oh, 
or just on the outskirts of Albury and I, I don't know if many of you know that actually I have a ecotourism degree that I did in Albury in the late 1990s so I actually lived in Albury for a year so this section of river is something a part of the river that I know very well because we used to spend a lot of time hanging out here in fact this house up here which is known as the waterworks was uh, rented by some friends of mine so we used to spend a lot of time on this section of the river jumping off this bridge and doing all those sorts of river antics that people at university get up to. Their house looks a lot better than it did in those days. And that is a very significant thing because that's the first river marker. So these river markers are all the way down the Murray from here and pretty much mark the number of kilometres till you get to the mouth. So we've got 2,214 kilometres left. So you pretty much see them every one or two kilometres down the river. Well, so now you know that I've got an ecotourism degree, I thought I would uh, start including a little bit more information about the uh, Murray River and the different areas we're going through. So I thought I'd start here, because this here is a place called Mungabarina Reserve. It's a place that we used to spend a lot of time hanging out here, because you can jump in the river and swim around the bend in the river. It's otherwise known as Mungab to the local people. But the re main reason this is uh, fairly significant is because this is where the local indigenous people used to meet every year. So we're on Wiradjuri country at the moment. And they used to come here every year to celebrate the migration of the Bogong moth. So if you don't know what a Bogong moth is, it's like a huge moth about this big that uh, the indigenous people used to eat. So every year they used to come up to Mungab and they used to have a big sort of celebration and all meet and all the different clans would get together and then once the big party was over they'd all go up into the high country and start feasting up on the uh, the bogon moths so a very important place for the uh, local indigenous people this place mungab <laughs> There you go, I'm in Albury and I've finished the first stage of the paddle leg, so that's six days of paddling. And I've got a couple of days here in Albury just to do some shopping and do some video editing and things. As you can see I'm just drying all my gear out behind me while the sun is out and before I check into the hotel. Um, but going really well, really happy with the way the gear's all working, really happy with how uh, the boat's working, how my body's working, happy with how my beard's growing. Uh, but certainly looking forward to paddling further down the river. The uh, water level is really low here in Albury, so below the weir. They're not letting out as much water as they were a few days ago, so I spent a lot of time hitting the bottom of the river and hitting a lot of snags and stuff, which I hadn't been doing for the last five days. So hopefully the river gets a bit narrower and the water goes a bit faster. But no, very happy with it all and uh, looking forward to walking over to the hotel and having a pizza and a couple of beers and hanging out with some friends for the next two days. Anyway, I will see you in another week.